Hello, welcome back to the A to Z of archaeology. This week is the letter X, and that means we're going to be studying X, where X, X, where, ooh, very cool, X rays, etc. Now, this is a pair of X ray specs, and it's a little bit off putting. I'd better take them up. Actually, what on earth are you wearing under there? Especially you. Ooh. And you. Oh, dear. No, 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 no. Don't like that. Oh. Honestly, leather with studs. Very strange. Anyway, yes, x-rays, etc. Archaeologists <laughs> have adopted many different techniques to try and see aspects of archaeology, which otherwise they couldn't, uh, without actually destroying objects and uh, um, often very, um, very delicate, delicate organic remains. Um, and uh, these techniques have often come from other, more conventional disciplines. X-rays were discovered by Wilhelm Konrad Röntgen when he placed a radioactive material on some photographic paper. He soon began to experiment. This is an X-ray of his wife's hand, and the implications for medical science were immense. For many years, X-rays were used as a quack cure for everything from headaches to indigestion, but eventually the medical profession did in fact catch on to its true potential. They realised that they could use x-rays and photographic plates to see into their patients without cutting them open. This is an early x-ray of President Roosevelt after he was shot. By the mid-20th century, x-rays and their use in medicine had become common practice in hospitals around the world. They were a quick and efficient way of diagnosing ailments, and the benefits of being able to see within the body without invasive surgery were very, very welcome. A CT scan is very similar to an X-ray, except this time they take a number of images from different angles around the subject. The process takes approximately 15 minutes, and the result is a series of images which can be manipulated and analysed in various ways. The images are very detailed, but also allow a slice-by-slice -slice analysis of the interior of the subject. So the use of X-rays and, uh, or X-ray techniques rather, and uh, CT scans have actually revolutionised um, the way that we're able to to look inside objects. Um, and often these objects uh, hitherto have been impenetrable to uh, archaeologists. Sometimes they reveal completely unknown new facts, changing the way that we see the object. And other times they simply confirm the intricacy and the beauty of objects and, uh, and ideas from the past. This is the famous Otzi the Iceman, discovered in the Alps in 1991. For a long time, people assumed that his cause of death had been exposure to the elements. However, in 2001, an X-ray revealed that he had an arrowhead lodged in his shoulder. He had in fact been shot in the back and not frozen to death. This was only revealed through X-ray analysis. It is not unusual for metallic objects to develop a crust or a concretion of rust around themselves over time. This layer can obscure the original form of the object in question. However, X-rays are able to peer beneath that layer, in this instance revealing an elegantly made iron cross. This information allows conservators to carefully clean away the waste, revealing something of the original object. This lump of rust from a shipwreck, for example, was x-rayed and revealed to be an elegant watch. In other instances, x-rays are used to confirm suspicions which are already held. This is a coffin for a mummified cat, and the x-ray confirms that within was in fact the remains of a kitten. Sometimes x-rays help to understand the complexities of an object. This pot was from the Burnham hoard, and x-rays revealed the complex density of metallic objects within. This enabled people to very carefully conduct a micro-excavation and eventually reveal an astonishing number of axe heads contained within such a relatively small pot. CT scans have most famously been used on mummies from ancient Egypt and they have proved extremely useful because it negates the need to open up the casket. Here, the casket and the body itself can be imaged using a CT scanner. This can be used to produce extremely high resolution images, and without ever touching the mummy, we can reconstruct or deconstruct the body to better understand who was within the casket. And CAD CAM machines can reproduce the skull without ever touching it. The Antikythera mechanism was discovered at the beginning of the 20th century in Greece. 
It has been subject to many X-rays and CT scans, and bit by bit we're beginning to possibly understand what this mechanism was for. A complex series of dials and cogs and even writing has been revealed through these imaging processes, and it was almost certainly linked with astronomical observations and navigation. Some have even gone so far as to call it an early computer. Now, as you might imagine, um, X-rays and CT scans and X-ray specs um, aren't actually uh, all that inexpensive. So therefore, archaeologists um, have to be uh, very particular about what and when uh, they decide to use these techniques. In other words, they're not open to everyone and they need specialists in order to, um, to operate the machinery, but also actually to interpret the findings. Archaeologists and the subject of archaeology is not the wealthiest on the planet, and therefore owning a CT scanner is out of reach for most. More often than not, the scans are performed by medical professionals, and interpretation is aided by them as well. There can be no doubting that standard x-rays are much easier to perform and interpret, however, they can very quickly become extremely complicated, and therefore the interpretation of x-rays in archaeology is definitely a specialist subject, best left to those who know what they're doing. So, X-rays and CT scans have changed the way that archaeologists view objects from the past. A closed casket doesn't have to be opened anymore. A, 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 the internal workings of a mummy or a bog body or someone who's been preserved does not have to be a mystery. And also, crucially, we don't have to destroy an object in order to confirm that it contains something of interest. And also now, concretions, the rust that gathers around metal objects, doesn't bloom out of control and hide the object from our sight. We're able to understand what is under there, and in some cases restore it, and in other cases leave it be, simply because uh, it, in some ways it's being stored inside that concretion. So we, we have looked uh, earlier on in the A to Z at ways of looking uh, underground, we've looked at ways of surveying the landscape, but now what we're looking at is ways of seeing inside archaeological objects, and that is extremely useful. So that's been X-rays, etc. <laughs> uh, hopefully you found this video interesting and or useful. Uh, feel free to comment below or send me a message if you have any questions. Um, I, um, of course, would very much um, appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel just by pushing the button above. Alternatively, please do find us on Facebook. Um, all you need to do is search for Archeosuit Productions and then click like. And often things that don't make it onto the channel uh, make it onto the page instead. News stories, cartoons, etc. So, until next time, thank you very much.